were talking about legalities in freelancing. Uh, when we practice freelance practice, we uh, usually have setups which are not fully properly set. Uh, we might have to manage many things on our own. We have to take our own things, our uh, equipments, our monitors, our drugs, everything if we really want to be safe. Especially if we go to a new setup, then we might have to take everything just to be on the safer side. So I'll be presenting here a case scenario, an eight-year-old boy, no comorbidities, no siblings. The lab and illustrations were normal. Uh, he was posted for lab appendicectomy. There was arrest and death on table. Then there's another case, uh, a routine eye surgery, but uh, being performed under general anesthesia. But uh, the, there was an accident this day, uh, disconnection of the ventilator for about four minutes. The anesthetist did not realize uh, there was bradycardia and he gave atropine for that, thinking it is an oculocardic uh, reflex, but the uh, patient suffered uh, irreversible brain damage and later died. So this was a case of proved medical negligence. So uh, I would like to invite Dr. Kautam Parikh sir and Dr. Kala ma'am and later Dr. Arun sir also for the case discussion and discussion on various points. Dr. Gautam, sir. Yes. Sorry, Chetna, what are you asking him? Do you want to specify what are you asking him? Yes. Sir, uh, in this case, I want to discuss, since it is the only child, uh, and there is a sudden death. How do yes. we go about this case? What will be the what? What is the importance of PAP, the consent and communication in this case? And later on, how do we manage this case after the death has occurred? Consent should essentially be an informed consent, uh, explaining explaining remotest possibility of of any any adverse eventuality. Communication should also be done with this effect. And pre-anesthetic checkup has been already done. So, so, so it has to be documented properly in the case paper. And Dr. How do we communicate with the patient's relatives? When do we communicate with them? And how do we uh, inform them about this uh, happening in the OT? Uh, patient should be informed informed regarding cardiac arrest or uh, some some grave complication as far as uh, possible. We don't declare death on table see if the patient ventilating inside OT give some time and uh, and allow allow the situation to cool down then we declare okay sir kala ma'am any uh, difference of opinion any other points to discuss uh, dr arun arun mishra has joined uh, dr arun mishra uh, welcome to the panel Thank and you. Uh, you can actually also add to uh, whatever I think Chetna has posed a few uh, uh, clay scenarios, uh, which uh, uh, I think uh, asking uh, Dr. Gautam Parikh about his I opinion. Just, may I just briefly introduce him? Yeah, for yeah. The, yeah. yeah please. Uh, yeah. I'm Dr. Vanilla here. I'm, I'm just uh, welcoming Dr. Arun Mishra here. Welcome you to this panel, sir. He's a practicing advocate in Supreme Court uh, Medical Legal Committee credited by three graduations, microbiology, medicine, and law. He has post-graduation in medicine, law, and yoga, uh, law degree from Mumbai University for Crime Crunch, and a PhD in meditation as well. It's indeed a great uh, honor to have you on this panel, sir. Thank Dr. You. Chetna has given us few scenarios, and we would like your opinion on that. Dr. Yeah, Chetna, yeah, over sure, to you. Sure. I've, I've joined late because I thought it is at 4 o'clock. So broadly, yeah, I've missed That's absolutely fine. No problem. Can you, uh, can you just repeat that scenarios, Vanilla? Can you... Just give a brief on uh, what Chetna, Chetna has yeah. got them. Okay, Chetna, Chetna, you can actually brief us on that again. So, Dr. Arun, for you, uh, I've presented two case scenarios. One is an eight-year-old boy with no comorbidities, no sibling. The lab mm -hmm. investigations were normal. 
he was posted for lap appendectomy and there was an arrest and death on table the other case is uh, for a male patient uh, he was uh, posted for a routine eye surgery there was an accidental disconnection of the ventilator for about 4 minutes which the anesthetist did not realize and he gave atropine say, uh, thinking it that it might be an oculocardic reflex and later the patient suffered irreversible brain damage and died so he was proven for medical negligence so we were discussing these two case scenarios sir uh, how do we go about it how do we explain to the relatives and how do we manage this later i remember uh, such a case i received in my career uh, almost same type of case i don't know you are talking about same case scenario or different Okay, sir. Same, same case scenario. I received same appendectomy operation of a minor child, and it is on table arrest. When I got a call from surgeon, I'm I'm talking about real story. It could be some other case also. I don't know, but I'm talking about real story. When I received a call from the surgeon, and uh, I said not to worry because there are lots of Supreme Court judgment which can really be protective to doctors because Supreme Court judgment very clearly says that uh, doctors are not responsible for a medical accident, even in the case of death. unless due care has been given properly so i said nothing is going to happen but important that due care need to be shown on paper the medical record so due care orally you cannot prove in a court of law due care can be proven in court of law through the written evidences written evidences is the medical records like pre anesthetic checkup pre pathological investigation every possible care pre examination and then during surgery all the care if everything has been on paper you can be defended but i still know that case in that case when paper was shared to me i was in utter shock because on a consent paper i found three finger impression of bachu where guardian signature is needed i was really shocked i i discussed with the surgeon you why this has happened because surgeon knows that there should be a guardian signature anesthetic notes there should be guardian signature but when they inquired with the people who have been given responsibility of making medical record in every hospital by and large by default it is a paramedical staff who has been given a responsibility to make a paper when they called the paramedical staff to inquire about this particular scenario innocently they said yes sir here it is written patient signature what we will understand with this we only understand it is a patient signature so they were right it is we doctor who have been in our academic year have been taught about medical records where we know about signature importance of adult and unconscious and child and guardian but these people are not aware unless they have been trained if 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 at all we are giving a responsibility of medical record to these people it is important to train them ki bhai where the minor childs are there or unsound mind people or could be insane guardian signature is needed so basically if you ask me any case scenario if you really want to defend or any doctor want to defend as per my experience in the court of law only medical record is going to help him out supreme court's judgments are very very clear and it's not one judgment multiple judgment when the court are there they clearly says for criminal liability also where the punishment in the form of jail related to 304 a or 304 part 2 doctor will never be held responsible so beautiful judgments even in a case of another case of dns uh, surgery where it tube intubation tube of smaller size was put which leaded to aspiration in a child and child died even to that case supreme court says it does not come under gross negligence so no criminal case patient are allowed to go to civil case or for compensation but no this only can be proven through medical record so even this pinas case scenario which is shared by you jitna i'll tell you if we start probably go i just heard gautam sir uh, talking about psc and all it, it it comes under due care try to understand due care word is emphasized in every judgment of a supreme court everywhere they said if due care has been given then even for the death a medical accident doctor must not be held responsible but due care has been defined widely widely even in the consent paper uh, the ipc section 86 91 everything is protected to doctor on criminal liability but again i let me repeat three four times the same word for my doctor colleagues here due care due care means any act which you do which shows a care towards a patient is 
to be proven to the court of law. If you have done that, in any given scenario situation, we can be protected in the law, even in the civil matters. I'm talking about even consumer matters. Sir, in such a case, uh, where, uh, how much time do we get to write the papers? And who takes the papers? No, these are that questions you. because the uh, anesthetist involved is so frantic. Uh, they, uh, and in private practice, they are the single anesthetist. Heart kapne lagte so whom do we inform also if such a situation occurs whom do we inform whether we inform the relatives first police the local associations or our indemnity or insurance policy person good 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 Kala, but let me tell you we being a doctor have got enough time to take a call for any scenario situation it is not that death has happened that we know that death has happened but relative does not know they are sitting outside Unless you declare they are not going to come. We have got enough time to declare. We can buy a time. I have I have handled multiple thousands of cases. I have handled multiple hundreds of cases of death. What you said is right. Immediately when I get a call, because the call, call I get as a medical legal expert, I take all the time. See, panic situations are there, understandable. But there, the counseling need to be done by the expertise, not by the friend circle level. The moment any expert people talks to you, you get more confidence. When you talk with a lawyer, when you talk with a medical legal expert, you get more confidence. And then you become cool because then you know that there is nothing going to happen to you. It's not that medical legal expert or lawyer threatens you. They just share the knowledge and the panic situation what you shared here, which I have seen in thousands of doctors, is just because of one reason, that is ignorance of law, ignorance of medical law. And only answer to this is replacing ignorance with the knowledge. If you share the knowledge with the people, yes, Supreme Court judgments are there. Don't worry. 304 is not draculous. In all given scenario, you will not be arrested on the spot. Supreme Court has given a guidelines to follow the some uh, procedure for uh, arresting a doctor like a, in criminal liability, like a, appointing a committee, opinion of committee needed. It is going to take an immediate, not immediate arrest. It is going to take a year. Lots of things are there. When it is shared, my anesthetic, my surgeon become cool. They come to the zero state. And then you discuss about the paper because hour to hour you can buy there. And then share the paper with your colleagues, another anesthetic, another experts, another medical legal experts, some lawyer in team. One hour or two hour you can buy comfortably inside OT. And once you are through with all the papers in legal angle also, I'm not talking about medical angle. Medical angle you can be master. Let me give you an example to make you understand what I mean by legal angle. I got a case of uh, surgery of peritonsillar abscess where doctor has uh, posted a page, you know, admitted at 2 o'clock, done a pathology report, taken a on call a report, 4 5 o'clock, posted a patient and medical missions happened. My doctor has taken all the time to make a paper, good paperwork they have done. But they have not consulted any medical legal expert or legal lawyer or what. But with this paper has gone to the committee, committee has opinized on one point even froth was observed, clear indication of pulmonary edema, why diuretic less six given after 45 minutes. It's not that my doctor is not given. But while writing, like what you say, rightly said, with a shivering hand, you cannot. So that is a very clear indication of that scenario. Probably they must have written on time and a particular, but mis mismatched. So the legal angle is also needed in many of the cases. Buy your time, be cool. See, now nothing can be done except to counseling a patient. Make a proper paper, foolproof paper, because the moment you declare a death, only two options are there. One, handling a patient. Secondly, calling a police. Because in postmortem, you need to go for the postmortem. So nightly, the moment you call a police for the postmortem, they are going to ask the paper. They immediately, you need to hand over a paper. They will not give a time to make a paper or modify paper or edit paper or whatever. So buy a time. Take an hour or two. No harm. Be cool. Discuss with whomever you want. We've got all experts here. Discuss with the colleagues. Be cool, make a paper and declare a death. No harm. And ready because you are not going to go behind the bar. So declare a death. If you feel that there is a mob violence chances or you feel that there is a sensitive people, in advance call a police. Otherwise also postmortem for postmortem. Call a police. No harm. You are not going to arrest it. Rather, relative feel a doctor has called a police because he is not wrong. Otherwise you will never call a police. And then Declare a death and hand over the body. Somewhere you need to take a bold step with all knowledge that nothing is going to happen to my doctor. Sir, and what if uh, the relatives do not agree for post mortem? See, 
who decide about the postpartum we who are a doctor we are a doctor why we did not know postpartum why we go for postpartum to ascertain the cause of death so even if it all relative are compelling you when you are not aware of the cause of death are you going to give a cause of death now do you know in surgery or arrest whatever has happened do you know the cause of death are you are certain about the if you are certain then follow the procedure for the procedure you can call a police ask for an noc there is a procedure in police station which says opting for no objection certificate when cause of death is not known now very clear every police has got that power has been given so what they give we don't have any objection to dispose of the body when cause of death is known but last time very clearly they mentioned it does not mean that investigation stopped so that is a procedure where you are certain about cause of death you are willing to give a death certificate tell patient to go to police station take a noc for giving a noc police takes a statement from the relative where they have to speak in favor of hospital and doctor because they are not going to because they want a certificate that statement is taken then noc is issued by the paper, police and then give a dc otherwise in 90% cases not advisable don't worry nothing is going to happen to you send for the postman even if it is a medical accident nothing is going to happen to you supreme court says unless it is gross negligence not to worry unless it is gross negligence i am again repeating in india we are absolutely protected well by law about civil medical negligence i am talking about consumer court or medical council yes have a good indemnity policy and enjoy your practice and implications of declaring death on table and declaring death in the icu in icu suppose uh, a brain patient goes brain dead or doesn't wake up from anesthesia or has an arrest but i'm able to revive and i know this patient is not going to come out so is declaring on Hello. table different from declaring in the Hello, you will you're not going to keep the patient on a table when patient is not waking up you will need to transfer the patient to the intensive care you cannot do brain dead test on on a table on a table right so i think that need to be very clear we don't declare that uh, patient brain dead on in anesthesia on the uh, operation theater or in table okay they need to be in the intensive care they need to be done by the intensive care uh, now and I'm one thing i i want to add always always revisit the papers like consent psc notes everything before writing anything further after after any any mis up occurs because because that will that will guide us what to write what what to omit yeah, yeah. i think what dr arun has actually reiterated again and again is that your documentation need to be perfect the one of the things which uh, for the last quite a few years i've been uh, talking on the uh, you know our group is a freelancers are very careless about documentation the consent is taken on the table they do not actually maintain anesthesia chart all right everything is actually taken so so cool little they get into trouble and when they get, get into trouble and thus uh, uh, where uh, people like dr arun mishra kaikli comes in you need to actually have someone you can actually talk to and give your advice do not actually talk to people of your friends they they are going to talk about their own opinion they are going to give opinion not not their uh, advice proper advice okay can we move on please yeah yes sir uh, now i would like to discuss on death outside ot uh, like it happen it can happen in dental practice radiology center like during mri or ct scan sedations in icu in ambulance transfer or in medical van sometimes eswl are given extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy is done mm -hmm. or in endoscopy suits so if something happens in such situations then what to do dr gautam parikh sir yes we advise the patient to to move move to the hospital back and and uh, and admitted in the icu 
and uh, and for and for further management whatever can be done for uh, sort of purpose of resuscitation or or uh, trying the most to to uh, take a take a chance to save the patient uh, the legal implications for the anesthetist in a stand alone center yes it's a stand alone center indemnity policy coverage and how do you protect ourselves because radiology centers yes or, they are not indemnity protected yes even a dentist not is not protected. an mbbs na huh? and yeah. radiologist sometimes is not there they have radiology technicians doing the ct scan yes so and, how uh, safe are we equipped uh, legal way legal legally doing uh, injecting dye when there is no inpatient admission also Uh, can Dr. Arun Arun Mishra please answer? Uh, let me share the live example to yeah. make you understand the yeah. application of the same. I have got multiple cases of uh, such a death in my uh, tenure. There was a case happened where CA abdomen was diagnosed and was sent to MRI center, where under dye was given and MRI was done and patient was re sent back to the hospital under ambulance. And it is utter surprise to the RMO who have received the patient in a hospital that patient was already dead. now the question came what my gautam sir has said rightly ki we need to resuscitate or we do need to definitely see but now it was a scenario where already death has happened now this time if you ask me what exactly the legal remedy my answer would be definitely since it is happened outside your purview outside your uh, scenario situation only option is to send for the postmortem because we don't know it is a death happened due to medical negligence or something Uh, have been done in ambulance by the relative we are absolutely unaware of the fact unless we do a postmortem we are not going to come in particular scenario situation like in this case this hospital has being a relative of a nurse of this hospital to in a good faith they have given a death certificate from hospital and they have shown the resuscitation little for name sake and thereafter the advocate of that family has approached this hospital and who very clearly said ki i was there in mri center i have witnessed to that doctor was instructing to take a breath while doing procedure but my patient was not moving there no breath in hurry i have found that they have packed the body there was some panic situation they have sent in ambulance and in my opinion when die was given patient died there now this is the question of all investigation But this doctor has called this MRI center. They very clearly says no. When we have sent from here, patient was alive. Now since death certificate was given and I got caught later, it was a very tough scenario situation for the doctor to manage that because the advocate has already got involved. Then eyewitness is going to be. Then it is going to be. Then that time, so what Gautam sir has suggested was only a right place. We need to make our medical record accordingly because what is mentioned on a paper is going to speak in court of law. what doctor says is going to be final authority but such a scenario should definitely come i have got a cases of mri death of bachu also where anesthesia was given and bachu never came out of the anesthesia now worst part what dr kala has said i agree with her a major mri center not only don't have a indemnity policy but they don't have a backup facility now what law says in any center day care center ipd center xy when you are doing some procedure on a patient and you know the complication and where the one possible complication could lead to death you need to have a backup facility backup facility means recovery center suppose emergency has called what emergency drugs are available in there are there is one room one bedroom in icu center or recovery center because if that is not there then if you ask me as a lawyer the section of ipc in our country changes earlier the section was 304a causing a death without intention with negligent act which has got very lenient section in this particular ipc which is a bailable offense maximum 0 to 2 years punishment but the moment we talk about scenario which i have discussed with you section get changed and section 304 which is nowadays a commonly applied regularly been applied i have seen like in 40s case 3 years 4 years back i have handled that case of 15 lakhs issue of delhi gurgaon 
where bachu was shifted from uh, on a ventilator and doctors found that ambulance which was brought was non ventilator ambulance and he refused to shift because bachu was alive as per the doctor but as per the relative bachu is already dead doctors making money on ventilator so they compelled to shift on that and that hurry worry in ambu bag was removed or maybe accidentally got removed and bachu opened the eye and died and that whole case has become a different case where if you heard on news news channel the haryana minister has said murder case lagao and in that case 304 was initially applied when i i have entered in that case and handled that case what 304 says causing a death without intention with a knowledge the word with a knowledge that particular thing can lead to death now in scenario like outside death like mri what you said and don't have backup facility and my anesthetics are very well going to dentist also very well going to these people also no backup facility and then the knowledge that you got a knowledge that there could be a possibility of death and death has happened and you are the instrument that the section get changed to 304 and 304 attacks 10 years punishment non bailable offense i got a bombay case you people have heard about a child died in dental clinic if you remember that is the handle handle that case four years back if i am not wrong where ga was given in dental clinic by one of the my anesthetic no backup facility nothing and the ga was given for removing a teeth which needs very clearly law says that if you want to give a ga take it to nursing home but ga was given in opd center and patient died i have got another plastic surgeon's case where liposuction was planned in daycare center clearly on consent paper i have read that paper was mentioned that no ga is needed local as as suffice the foreign patient patient was of dubai to this particular center and my anesthetic is given a ga and patient went in vegetative state so if he death is happening on outside the premises of hospital on road wherever we need to analyze our role before jumping into conclusion many of the time you may not be directly related many of the time possible that you may be related also so we need to calculate the things and accordingly we need to take action if you are directly involved yes in any given scenario situation where your involvement is direct like a dental clinic like a uh, bachu anesthetic given during mri or ct scan of a bachu where you are directly involved criminal liability medical council liability consumer court liability is very well on you but where your role is not there let me give you one more case to uh, share where anesthetic was not being a party it was a case of kolapur which i have handled where post dl surgery patient was shifted to ward patient came out of anesthesia that was a narrated by anesthetic and suddenly after 2 hours of tl surgery patient collapsed in that case when matter has gone to the court of law district commission state commission i argued in national commission my role was that ki my role being an anesthetic i was for anesthetic i said my role was done properly in this case why i should be made a party with the surgeon when but patient already came out of anesthesia patient was responding to the all the cues patient is take there after what happened i am not responsible for that in that case court has taken absolutely clear reason they have penalized surgeon for 10 lakhs rupees but they have acquitted or sorry they have dismissed the complaint against the anesthetic in i am talking about national commission so in every given scenario situation role need to be defined in anesthetic cases your role is to see that patient comes out of anesthesia or the time period one day two day whatever you decide to take a care if your role mention on a medical paper all ipd paper you mention very clearly like a, what gautam sir has said about psc when you are talking about uh, pre anesthetic checkup you need to think of post anesthetic also checkup and post anesthetic checkup you mention that patient is out of anesthesia patient responding mention that so that tomorrow in court of law it can be argued in your favor that my role was this my am anesthetic my role is this and i have done my role with all standard protocol of treatment with all care i should be relieved because tomorrow in court of law you are going to make a party with the group in that case again criminally you will be saved like in pune's case very recently gautam sir if you remember a very recent case where ayurvedic doctor has done a surgery post surgery anesthetic was involved like i am just giving example because you talked about dentist 
same way this was a ms ayurved doctor who has operated uh, in, in a pune that was a long back uh, and then this judgment came just two months back very recent judgment where this ayurvedic doctor was punished for 10 years jail punishment under 304 he could not able to defend himself but anesthetic was acquitted why because anesthetic gone for emergency done the thing he could able to prove to the court presented to the court that my role was limited i gone to save a life even being a ayurvedic doctor i am unaware that he is ayurvedic or homeopathic or ayurvedic i was knowing him as a surgeon i have been called for emergency i have been i have done my job patient was out of that and he got acquitted otherwise he would have got also 10 years punishment so everywhere when i talk about criminal liability when i talk about civil liability when when we discuss about medical counsel liability everywhere when you are concerned to your role you need to complete fulfill your role so if patient dies out of the hospital where patient direct role is not there patient is already fine and all or discharge and suddenly collapse or could be any reason then you can be defended well in court of law there was a case where a 31 year old woman died in a in a in a mri center because the mri was uh, was rescheduled because of power failure meanwhile that lady had some snakes snakes going with her uh, bhavi to to the local market then she aspirated on being given sedation and uh, But who gave the sedation, Doctor uh, Gautam? Who gave yeah. the sedation? Was the sedation given by the anesthetist? Yes, anesthetist was called. And Anas- so he did not. Anesthetist did not check. Gave sedation. The- court took a stand. That no. That uh, the doctors forgot to ask the food history. But exactly. But but it but it's equally patient's duty to. to reveal and 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 in the mri not it has oh. been clearly written that patient should come nil by mouth yeah that is not actually true you have to if you do not ask uh, the patient will not tell it need to be you it is your duty as a doctor and that's what we try to stress what made to pay pay 25000 as a token punishment to the mri center and the anesthetist was not punished hmm or there one more question uh, for f- uh, female anesthetist rules regarding arrest and about anticipatory bail means uh, if you can very nice female question. anesthetist yeah, i tell I you mean, yeah. one thing one thing let me tell you uh, kala with my experience of 18 years in this line and fighting in supreme court and high court i can tell you one thing not about female even for the male in a medical negligence case we are absolutely protected truly protected if you are qualified if you have got a place where you have checked everything and you have properly done your duty 304 a being a bailable offense bailable means it is your right to get a bail even if a judiciary or judge is enemy to you then also constitution protect you so bailable means bail guaranteed bail so in all given scenario situation if you go in bailable to anticipatory bail court will directly say being a bailable offense why you are coming to me okay. so anticipatory is not a option in a bailable offense yes let me add on to that ki considering it is 304 claim where anticipatory bail need to be taken because in a setup like a Uh, in a very village area or micro interiors interiors not having a proper facility but yet anesthetic also involved with the gynec to do delivery and delivery happened patient dies or could be cesarean could be mtp even i got a case of mtp where short uh, anesthesia was given and patient died so in all given scenario situation where there is a possibility of cases and nowadays 304 is widely applied yes you can go for anticipatory now to your question and answer to your question yes in compare to male female has been always given a lenient view even by judiciary section of crpc is also different when bail is opted for female and leniency is so if you ask me in compare to male it is easy to take a anticipatory bail for female 
improperly been presented and to make you understand about the same scenario in riya chaturvedi case if you have seen that female got bail in all drug abuse cases but all other accused are still behind the bar so in our india that is clear that female has been given a leniency even by judiciary fantastic dr arun i think uh, we have Sir, just one more thing seven, seven about more minutes. social media I, we talk I... in the groups uh, we talk about a case we ask for help and we are in a panic situation we need help and something goes wrong can that be used as an evidence against you not necessary Discuss... see depend uh, depend on fb or social media or xyz you are asking for the help what wording you are putting always remember asking a help comes under due care i am i'm stressing more on due care because i get lots of benefit of emphasizing this word in court of law that is my practical experience that the reason repeatedly i am emphasizing that so asking help taking a cross references calling a friend for any emergency comes under due care due care means what care he has given what supreme court says you are not responsible for medical accident if at all any accident has happened but you are definitely responsible once you have seen there is complication happened and not attempted to revive or resuscitate here due care comes when you call for help and any of your friend circle comes and help you it is in court of law that all the care has been taken you know you have taken extra care to have a experts with you because your focus and intention to save a life so whenever you ask on social media for help or whatsapp group or xyz it cannot be taken as evidence against you rather if you got a good advocate to present the same can be twisted in your favor absolutely uh, that's a wonderful point uh, dr arun because the anesthetist is a peer group with having professionals from all over the world they are going to give you the right advice and that can be used and that is that is i think people are propagating wrong kind of messages on us they say oh you should not write on facebook you should not write on that i think that's why your advice actually comes very useful i think that should be a very clear message that asking for help is not you're not showing your that uh, you know you have done something wrong that is only showing that you actually have shown insight into the fact that there is a problem and that you have asked for help people like you shy I away like... they they shy away from asking from help they think that people will think that oh you are not competent that is one thing you need to they think that as a single person if you are there you have to be highly competent and deal with everything the help is taken as as if you are it's it's a weakness it is not it is in a, whether it is in india or wherever it is abroad help is not a weakness it is actually a strength it shows that you have insight to ask for help and that should be clearly i think we are actually have very short time uh, left i am very particular about timing uh, but i think this session has been wonderful and i would like dr arun to actually just you know starting from the time like because there are a lot of things uh, which uh, people don't do in freelancing starting from like not doing a pre op check patients are actually seen on the table patients day is it actually right they need to actually be be actually the surgeons and the anesthetists both need to know that you cannot actually take a consent when patient is already on the table because that is under duress so how right they are actually trying to do anesthesia when the patient is already on that that we have discussed so many time but freelancers are always in a situation where they are called and they go immediately and like dr gautam was saying or patient was in mri and asked for sedation i can tell you 100% of the time that the pre op checker wouldn't have been asked no patient he did not forget to ask for or uh, whether he patient has eaten or not the question would be he would have gone with a syringe and given a sedation without actually asking any question because he would have assumed this is assumption that that patient is fasting no do not assume anything in anesthesia do you do not assume anything at all if you don't ask if you don't document it has not been done the documentation 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 
Regarding this, I had a case. I prepared everything for GA, and just when I went to see the patient and asked about engbim history, he said he uh, his uh, friend had come with him, and he was feeling hungry, so he went off to eat ice cream, and so according along with him, he also had ice cream. Just half an hour before surgery, so we had to postpone the case. So I think covered directly. Uh... Without actually uh, going further, I think I will actually ask Dr. Arun to actually give the clear points uh, uh, for how uh, a freelancer should conduct themselves, uh, starting from uh, when they are actually called for a case. It will be a great help uh, from, from uh, Dr. Arun. So can uh, I just have one scenario, yeah. one last one? Yeah. Usually we have two operation theaters and anesthetists is called for a one major surgery, anesthesia is given, general anesthesia. Then another patient comes in OPD, most, if it is NDM, the gynec or anybody, minor procedure, if it is there, they say you give short GA or an emergency LSCS comes, they ask you to induce because it is a short GA or a regional practice. So how do we go about it? And how legally are we safe in conducting two operations at the same time? Just one last. I, I think that doesn't require a legal thing. You cannot be in two places as an anesthetist. You're responsible for only one person. If it is proved, I would let I would let Doctor Arun take the answer. Yeah, Doctor Arun, you are muted. Yeah, Doctor Arun, you are muted. Yeah, Doctor Arun, you are Anything and everything happens to anesthetic is only because of exploitation. You don't put your foot. You get, you always feel that ki, I cannot do something which can really annoy a surgeon or annoy ortho surgeon or gynec because you are getting regularly called from there. That is the very natural phenomena. There is a huge competition in every field, including anesthetic. You also feel that in your territory, five anesthetic is there. If at all, I don't. I agree with the consultant or other surgeon, probably next time he may not call you. And this is the only reason where we fall in trap. All the scenario, case history, case scenario, you all are sharing is just because of these reasons. Getting called for two emergencies, running area in there, just keeping one patient sedated, run to other hospital, go and sedate, continue surgery, come back. These are the commonest thing happening in our country. With the God bless, nothing happens because we are protected by the law. But let me tell you, sooner or later, we need to really get reformed. The Consumer Protection Bill 2020 has changed the whole scenario in this country. Because of COVID-19, we have not seen the color of this particular law. But it has been actually been enforced in country from 20th July 2020. And it is going to be one of the toughest law for the service provider. If you read, you will understand why I am saying so which not only talks about the compensation, but in various places talk about the punishment in the form of jail. Being in a country where we are on a technology platform, being in a country where 50% population is below 25 years age group, I'm talking about 60 crore population plus. Being in a country where 73% population is below 45 years age group, can imagine the strength of the people master in internet and decision maker of the house. Your 25 year old daughter and son takes a decision, including the decision of the health. And they are aware about the remedies in a country where education has increased to extreme. The laws are been well implemented in a country where educates are now giving an entrance exam to become educate are serious about their profession are going to be a tough time for my doctors in the future. UK, USA, you all can go on internet and check in that countries. If you see the status of UK, 94% gynec have got cases against them. Means every doctor almost. Because the third party funding is legal there. We are lucky that third party funding is still not be legal. But in our country, discussion is already in a parliament and a court of law. Where, if at all the claimant does not have a money, the someone is funding for litigation. And the reason you see in that country, whole page advertisement comes, no gain, no fees. 
and people are going to attorneys my friend we are lucky but we are proceeding towards that laws are changing teleconsultation law another uh, i was uh, adding to what she was saying ki even not only in fb now teleconsultation is legal you can get connected in any situation to your colleagues on a tele uh, on a video call audio call that is is legal because rmp versus rmp you can do following consumer court the laws are changing coming down to shiv's question for anesthetic for freelancer my advice my opinion that please put your foot whenever you feel that i should not proceed giving example in opd center you have been regularly called for giving anesthesia please refuse if they don't have a facility in a smaller nursing home not having a facility if you are regularly called please if they don't have a backup facility no boils operator no instruments no emergency things where you are going to be struggling for reviving a patient please put your foot unless and once you do as a unity worst part is that our anesthetic knowing that they are very important people in this country are not united ask yourself the highest premium of indemnity is paid by anesthetic highest premium is paid means they are the high risk people while surgery food gives order jointly and severely where 50% you need to pay from your pocket ask yourself are you asking for 50% fees of the doctor where you are giving anesthesia no because you are been exploited because you are not united if you are united and all tenants associate anesthetic of the local area decide that this is going to be our rate if the surgeon does not get anesthetic where they will go and surgery is going to be because of you only but since we surrender everywhere we face the issues you go and see the history of anesthetics history of the cases of anesthetic wherever my anesthetic has got a problem if you go and deeper and do the study you will find that that anesthetic must have surrendered on a will and wish of that particular surgeon you are lucky that you said no in ice cream case but in such a cases surgeon don't want to postpone even many of the time surgeon says kuch nahi hoga de 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 sambhal lenge you must have experienced this because they don't want to cancel their appointment and then we also are surrendering only humble request one don't get exploited put your foot you are also have done a pg in anesthesia take a stand in a country where cross speciality practice is banned after danaka's case after mci guidelines even for simple clw even for local anesthesia plastic surgeon we are using need to have anesthetic even for small cataract surgery anesthetics are needed even for aesthetic nurse drug because that is your field cross speciality if you unite nothing is going to happen but yet if you are doing the protocol which every one need to follow is the first pre anesthetic checkup going through proper clinical examination of the patient pathological investigation paper tell your doctor that one day before i want to visit i am going to charge my consulting fee no harm in that or charge in your fees but see that you document everything prior to surgery look to consent paper don't overrule consent paper see that all the signature on a place check that it is a bachu who signed or a patient who signed in our country in every gyri cases still for female in laws are signing i have got multiple cases in this country where i struggle because it is either husband signed or in law signed or sasu signed sasu signed no defense left for me for my doctors check the consent paper see that you have signed or consent paper or not because consent is a contract between two parties you and a patient mentioned in a consent paper as per the judgment of kashmira kohli where real consent and informed consent has already spoken in length where all four ingredient you need to follow first informing about the patient about anesthesia you are going to use complication possible complication alternative if at all instead of this this type of anesthesia and refusal consent doing signature on a consent paper anesthetic consent must be different procedure wise all procedure of different complication 
you sign unless you sign the contract is incomplete the patient signature doctor signature witness signature witness must be yours because in court of law if husband has signed if in law as a or attendant had signed in court of law they file affidavit that we have signed a blank paper but if it is your witness they say doctor has explained everything to us before signing have a three signature mandatory witness patient and doctor signature translator you need to have a translator signature look to these things don't use till the time new law comes don't use pre printed form on 6th of july 2020 in our country during covid scenario already judgment has passed by the national commission in rg stones case very clearly said that pre printed consent form having a blank space and place for signing is arbitrary this it is unfair trade practice it is deceptive in nature and defense in service 10 lakhs penalty has given to pay in legal aid because case was one on the ground of a medical negligence because on a merit doctor safeguarded but only on a consent paper that become a law in country now so pre printed consent form is not a good law in country till the time it is overruled i am talking about 6 july means we are in december 6 month back so look to the consent paper have a proper looking if it is properly done see that patient sign then proceed see little care it does not take more than 5 minutes it is not consuming time consuming earlier day visit looking to the paper maintaining the paper going to the ot checking the paper examining the patient proceeding with the procedure mention all ipd paper properly whatever you have done don't worry about the complication you, you are not a god you don't know what is going to happen human body is a complex machine even court says and complexity of the same is beyond imagination of a professional so you can't say that you are a doctor what is going to react you don't know if it is reacted don't get panic maintain properly maintain everything good record must be done on a paper i have got a case of cesarean section death people have filed 29 crore compensation case because there is a mess happened in between doctor the push game it is because of you it is because of you advantage gone to the people so have a proper medical record maintained during ot post check up is mandatory post check up notes are mandatory mention everything if you are taking that care believe me my friends nothing is going to happen to you nothing is going to happen to you in my experience of 16000 plus issues which i have handled 99% is not gone to the court of law it is not because of i have done some miracle i shared the knowledge which i am sharing with you it is ignorance we are protected in this country don't get panic nothing is going to happen but you need to see your dignity don't get exploited be unite ask for the money what's what's wrong in asking the money you are the high risk people in this particular whole medical field you are the most high risk people so have that nothing is going to happen if you take a proper standard see what i am sharing is nothing new it has been already been taught to you in academic qualification in ug pg you have already learned all this thing only thing that you need to implement and execute what we learned during our academic nothing is going to paper record i have heard i have many of the people saying documentation i re retreat on that documentation 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 but documentation should on a proper angle just for sake of documentation don't make a documentation but make a documentation because if you are clear on your particular domain nothing is going to happen even if it goes in court of law but jointly you need to be really really careful yeah any questions oh thank you uh, dr arun uh, i just have one please. question uh, yeah please may i ask shiv yeah please oh, yeah yeah go on go on yeah it's just regarding group practice uh, i mean I, i just want to clarify for the purpose of uh, the entire audience see we take care of one patient uh, uh, during anesthesia and then we look after them in the post operative period and then uh, we may have a chain of incidents where it's a long case and two anesthetists might be doing the case what is the medical legal cover as per indian law as per indian law there is two three things which you need to remember if you have made a private limited company all the stakeholder are responsible in any given scenario situation when i talk about civil negligence i am talking about uh, uh, compensation in the form of money mm. then you need to uh, insure yourself with indemnity uh, the private yes. limited company also and yes. if you are doing a, a, a cases two anesthetic three anesthetic four anesthetic for same cases 
you have given and gone and other has continued whatever be the scenario situation whoever is signing on a paper are going to be criminally directly liable okay. because in court of law only medical paper suppose the senior uh, person has signed like hmm. hod has signed i am giving example of corporate hospital where yes. hod has signed but whole team is doing the activity the signature the name the person who are on paper are going to be liable clearly okay. unless it is proven that yes nsd was given by houseman so okay. criminal liability goes there civil liability goes there medical counsel liability okay. goes there you know group practice all the anesthetic who have involved in the case is going to be liable in form of company the company is going to be liable let me touch upon indemnity policy for the purpose of the same yes. indemnity okay. policy professional indemnity policy is a good indemnity policy my request that ki now we are in a stage of 2020 in our country we have still got a policy i'm talking about india we have got all still policies which was prepared in 1950 and 1960 and 1970 scenario at that time and scenario today is different today we are having a majority of cases in a cosmetic domain cosmetic surgery has grown my anesthetic goes to every hair transplant or any of the cosmetic surgery still <coughs> insurance company does not cover please check your insurance now customize <coughs> call me i'll guide you don't worry i have already discussed with various companies i brought customized policy for the doctor in discounted rate <coughs> what you pay is 36000 i'm talking about 1 crore 30000 rupees for 1 crore my anesthetic pays i am getting i have customized it getting in 20000 rupees also because of the unity no nothing even for 15000 you can negotiate the same with customized customized means what because of teleconsultation law because of consumer protection bill 2020 cases are going to be filed across the country because even consumer protection act says complainant can file a case where he reside or work for the gate so even if you are treated a patient in mumbai staying at tamil nadu he can file in tamil nadu you need to have a legal coverage across the country now so customized policy covers the legal fees also customized policy covers one is to one means one case of 1 crore or 10 cases of 10 lakh will be covered customized policy covers latest technologies including teleconsultation telemedicine liposuction lasix and every latest technology which covers that it covers the cosmetic domain it covers majority of funds including out of court settlement so go for customized charges are less but coverage are more because we are not aware of this that the reason whatever policy you are taking you are continued with that policy for years but yeah. if you see the exclusion clauses you will be shocked to see so when actually matter goes in court of law insurance company very very sweetly repudiate your claim and then you need to pay from so have a good indemnity policy if you are running a group practice if yeah. you are having a institute or if you are having a group or no, something like a, a mm-hmm. association go for such a policy which covers group also that is available you can discuss with me i can help you in that no problem in that go for such a policy for the company like private limited company so that even if at all someone will make a party being a private limited you can take in care of because being yes. the association you can be taken care of so some some person is doesn't not have a policy you can be taken care of secondly being a jointly severe liable like i have heard you saying that uh, dental don't have a indemnity policy or mri center don't have a indemnity policy in all given scenario situation if you got a good policy even if it are jointly severely comes even if they don't have indemnity policy and they are not ready to pay because when payment comes i have seen in court of law many of the doctors say i am not going to pay because it is jointly severely so in such a scenario situation your policy itself is enough to compensate the people have a good policy indemnity policy have a medico legal service experts on your fingertip my humble request <clears throat> dr gautam is there many of the medico legal experts are there why i am saying that because with my experience what i have seen that no doctor wanted to have a case against them yeah indemnity policy comes when case get registered in a court of law but before that there is a huge gap <clears throat> like pre litigation you know this patient is going to be a a potential litigant discuss with your medical legal expert audit your ipd opd paper prepared with all onset if at all notice received answer in such a way that it does not go to the court of law acting on fbs or social media defamation act on that send a notices to these people who are defaming you or taking any advantage of your not only that even many of the time recovery my doctor are giving their services get getting getting payment later on many of the institute refused to give a payment 
medico legal services are there ask and even notice everyone fear with the notice you also fear with the notice majority of things is covered under that domain so have a good medico legal service provider with you to help you have a good indemnity policy to support you so in consumer case indemnity policy is going to suffice now the customized policy which i am talking to is also covering a criminal medical negligence it also covering a medical counsel negligence the legal fees of any attorney which is huge like if you ask me my fees is also been covered under insurance policy because even if i charge per appearing 3 lakhs you don't need to pay from your pocket if you got good customized because they are now giving you the policy customized even the legal defense cost up to the policy amount covered so you got a cost of defense 1 crore rupees you can engage any top notch in the country by paying just 20000 rupees per crore just imagine such a great policies are available protect yourself with protect for criminal liability protect for civil liability do stress less practice outsource the people who are expertise in this field and focus on medical record nothing is going to happen to you all. thank you thank you very much uh, <laughs> dr uh, i have two questions actually from uh, the members uh, one thing is about uh, you know even in uk uh, the concern is only for the surgery uh, anesthesia is part <clears throat> of the surgical consent so do or is india i mean people have been having different opinions uh, do the anesthetist need a separate consent form or is there a different consent for anesthesia in india One. yes second yes, thing, second thing second thing is is there something called death on table because we do not actually have anything called death on table consent there is high risk consent uh, depending on our asa classification but is there something called as a thing <clears throat> oh that also reminds me the other question uh, which uh, people have asked and you actually covered it actually a little bit uh, uh, regarding that case of uh, the ayurvedic uh, surgeon now recently uh, what is happening in india with mixopathy uh, if if somebody already knows that the person uh, the surgeon is actually a ayurveda or somebody else and is is calling an anesthetic qualified anesthetist should they actually be attending that kind of calls if anything goes mishap happens he already knows that he is not a qualified surgeon but still doing it should they actually be going i mean i would like to have answer from you i know what my answer would be but we would like to have answer from you please thank you sure. so there is one more clause i want to add in this good evening sir uh, not only just a, a ayurvedic person suppose somebody is not a qualified surgeon also say he is an mbbs or she is an mbbs they have been It's practicing fine. for many years like a gynecologist and we are not aware that they do not hold a proper degree and suppose we are being called to go on that case so then how are we liable if they end up doing something complicated and the patient then doesn't make it so then how how do we how are we protected or exposed in this scenario over to you yeah, dr arun yeah about uh, the separate consent answer is yes because anesthetic need to have a separate consent in our country and it is advisable to have a separate consent so always go with a separate consent and for every procedure you need to prepare your own separate consent for spinal is different for local is different for ga is different you need to prepare a separate consent because complication differ in every complications we were keeping in mind all the four things which you need to be so yes separate consent is definitely needed because it is going to protect you a lot following all laws of the country one of the beautiful judgment of kashmira police spoken in depth and detail about the same so anesthetic consent is definitely needed second question about death on table in our country i'll tell you uh, mercy killing or euthanasia is not a legal law yes shanbagh case has given a very clear picture about uh, the scenario situation where the same procedure and process to be adopted which has been given under organ transplant act uh, for declaring a brain death of the people death on table high risk consent which is a very common thing which we adopt in our country we always take high risk consent high risk consent is definitely going to help you because it comes under information given to the patient in a part of informed part when we talk about informed consent means you are trying to inform every possible thing so when you are taking high risk consent definitely it is going to help you a lot because you are informing in detail in depth about the prognosis to the patient and with all that knowledge 
patient is willing to surrender you for the purpose of same so definitely it is going to help you a lot not a death on table but definitely your consent which you always adopt on consent is a consent you name it high risk low risk because even the simple consent is high risk consent there is nothing like low risk and high risk but every consent you name whatever you want but every consent is like a information given to the patient information what you have got a knowledge so if it is a critical condition emergency cases you are giving a consent yes you can mention whatever name you want but you are informing that there is a high chances that you may die maybe in emergency situation you are not an investigation but proceeded for or it could be obstructive liver pain nothing investigation and suddenly called so in emergency in our country everything is maaf so not to worry about that now the third question in relation to uh, if i remember one doctor is not about mbbs doctor or any other doctor so let me tell you various judgment of supreme court has very spoke clearly spoken the facility available at particular place at particular time to be considered while deciding the case if it is in an absolutely in micro interior where no gynecologist are available mbbs knowing all aspect are proceeding with an anesthetic has gone no harm but in a case like city area where a gynecologist are available and in spite of that you are going and cross speciality practices there if you are clear with your role you can be defended of but yes you need to have a more defense point in such a scenario situation in our country i have argued a case of hair transplant case done by mbbs doctor which has caused regular fertilities and then thereafter uh, the loss of eye i have argued the matter of chennai where mbbs doctor dies in hair transplant i i, I have involved in a parallel death case of hair transplant where dermatologist was involved why i am giving example because that is first landmark judgment which i could able to argue in the court of law and brought from mci that mbbs can do hair transplant so if you are going for mbbs for hair transplant and all because see mci has amended our laws in 2003 when they have given a schedule 3 of various qualification development happened 2010 2011 2012 but no amendment no cosmetic surgeon no hair transplant surgeon no the new domain has been brought in absence of that being a minor surgery is mbbs can do same question same answer to my doctor they are allowed to do delivery also they are allowed to do minor procedures also in scenario situation where emergency call upon to mbbs doctor also so you need to take a call accordingly in which area you are practicing which way you have been called as it emergency situation or a normal elective surgery is and all accordingly your liability is going to be different coming down to ayurvedic practice sir ayurvedic practice sir yes different state has got their own law health sector comes under the concurrent list of constitution in country constitution has got three list one is a national list that is central list second is a state list third is a concurrent list health comes under the concurrent list because state can make a law and center can make a law but it is not mandatory on state to adopt the <coughs> laws made by the center because it is a purview of state like a clinical establishment act 2003 central government has adopted that law 2010 amendment law, but still maharashtra has not adopted so various state has not adopted so it is a choice of a state to adopt it or not to adopt it but yes state can make a law so like in maharashtra if you see state has made a law in a favor of ayurvedic doctors unani doctors and very clearly they have amended 1956 act of maharashtra medical practice law where under they have amended section 25 provision 4 5 and 6 saying that 4 and 5 saying that they are allowed to do modern medicine of practice in which they are trained in using all latest technology latest skill and latest uh, education so because of that maharashtra has already allowed but now central government central government has already passed a notification so once act is made courts are there to execute the act court are not above the act act is supreme in our country because act is made by assembly or a parliament so act is supreme in our country if act is ultra virus or notification is ultra virus like the same notification of 2015 14 uh, uh, adopted by state of maharashtra allowing homeopathic doctor to give a pharmacology injection and go for pharmacology course and go for modern medicine has been challenged by ima even for the ayurvedic they have challenged ima has challenged dispending in court of law in high court unless that judgment comes it will difficult for anyone to say that it is ultra virus or not so if at all someone are aggrieved by this 
and goes to Supreme Court and file SLP or goes to High Court and file a writ saying that this is ultra virus over use of power done by the government. And if court says yes, it is ultra virus, then you are safe. If not, and you have accepted that law, and it is made by notification by central government, then it become a law of the land. In such a scenario, if you are going and supporting anesthetic anesthesia to the Ayurvedic surgeon, you will be protected by the law because law itself is allowing you. Itself is allowing them to do a surgery. So you will be protected under the corner of that unless that notification challenge, because that has been, as I said, parliament is above Supreme Court. A Supreme Court is judiciary are adopting and executing the things, but lawmakers are the supreme. They are, and law is already made. So, if it is not been challenged, we need to accept that. So, allowing Ayurvedic doctor, allowing MBBS doctor to do a practice of minor surgeries in our involving anesthetic is well in the domain of a law. So, not to worry. It seems I have answered all the questions. If I missed, fantastic. Uh, I think this has been one of the best ever sessions on uh, law. And uh, thank you, Dr. Arun and uh, Dr. Gautam Parikh. Uh, I think uh, uh, we have already exceeded, I think, our time quite a lot. Sir, can I thank him? <laughs> yeah, please, please. Go yeah, on. Thanks, now. Dr. Arun, for keeping my word and coming here. I've been associated with Dr. Arun since the past 15 years. Hmm. When first time I uh, was in trouble, he picked up the phone without knowing who is it. And he helped me write notes, everything in the middle of the night. 130. Mm. Okay. So, and it took me 10 years to join his services. No? Mm. Still, he has been helping throughout without me, uh, you know, being a member of his doctor risk association. So, thank you so much, sir, for enlightening us. Yeah. I mean, the, you, Dr. I, Dr. all my delegates, not to worry, I was also a doctor, now I'm a lawyer. Mm. So, anytime you need me, don't worry, you can call me anytime. And I have surrendered my medical degree only for the cause of a doctor because I know how my doctor are in trouble when actually scenario situation comes. So rest assured, rest assured, I'm always there. And I really thank from heart to Dr. Kala. She has actually invited me today. Then I have spoken to Chetna and Vanilla. But I never say no to my people. No, yeah, And never any doctor. call comes, I know this is a panic situation. But... I don't do any miracle. I just share the knowledge. That's all. And that is enough to save my doctor. My humble request, don't get panicked. Thank you, you are being given a license <laughs> which are going to protect you. So never ever get worried even in any scenario situation of death and all because you are not done intentionally. Criminal law says that intention is not there. So when there's no intention, nothing is going to happen. With all this, I really thank, very, very special thank to Kala. Thank like you, Chetan, and all the delegation, Shiv, and to all the organizers who are really taking pain. I am always there on any topic you want to discuss on medical law. I am openly available. You just call. I will give my time to you all people. Thanks. Thank thanks you. to all delegates. You can continue your session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Nice Dr. Thanks to Dr. Arun. Thanks for hosting you at one of the, a few months back before COVID. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Arun. I think... Uh, we would actually probably want to actually have one only session with you probably. I mean, that has been such an enlightening session. And especially for, I think, anesthetist community, I think that is a great help. Uh, I think there's no words uh, which will thank you enough uh, for being on this session today. And uh, thank you again, once again. Uh, Vanilla, we can move on to our next session. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, sir. Sir. Thank you Kola, ma'am, for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I can leave. Yeah, thank, thank you, Arun, sir. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you, you very much, again. sir. Thank you. Absolutely. And we'll thanks, definitely. Kala. I can, I can, I can feel your emotions. Thank you very much. I, <laughs> I, I, you really recollected me that old days, 50 years back story. I, I, I got linked to that. Thanks to all. And I feel proud of being an advocate now. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, yes, we, it was indeed a very uh, enlightening session and uh, quite heartwarming because uh, we understand that the law actually supports us. And as long as we do not have an, any intention uh, to kill anyone and in, with the due respect and care to the patient, we will be moving ahead uh, to the next session, ABCD of freelancing. I think it's all been about freelancers, but most of the sessions that we've done today